In this video tutorial, we are going to focus about the deviations of Beer's law. This is the deviations of Beer's law. So, if you don't know what is Beer's law, I recommend you to go back to my previous uh, video explaining about the Lambert Beer's law and then come here. So, in a simple word, what Beer says that the amount of light absorbed by a material is directly proportional to the concentration of the absorbing molecules. That means, say uh, you have a cubit and you put uh, some bovine serum aluminum into it. So the concentration of bovine serum aluminum is 1 mg per ml. And if you pass a light through this sample, the molecule that is present within the sample will absorb some amount of light. So you can you can get a OD value. So say the OD OD was uh, say 0.2. OD is 0.2. Uh, for example, if you take BSA 1 mg per ml, the OD value is 0 0.2. So, if you increase the concentration from 1 mg to 2 mg, say now you are adding more amount of BSA into the solution. In that case, as the number of molecules increases, the degree of absorption will also increase. In that case, Beer's law says that the OD value will be increased from 0 0.2 to maybe 0 0.4 or something like that. So, this is basically Beer's law. Beer's law states that the amount of light absorbed by a material is directly proportional to the number of absorbing molecules present in the sample. In that case, if we put concentration, if we take concentration in the x axis and absorbance that is OD at the y axis and if we increase the concentration from 2 mg to 4 mg to 6 mg to uh, sorry 2 mg, 4 mg, 8 mg and 16 mg, 32 mg uh, that is the in micro, uh, milligram per ml. In that case, uh, according to Beer's law, if the concentration is 2 mg per ml then the OD value say here, if the concentration is 4 mg per ml, that is double concentration, then the OD value might be increases double. In that case, from uh, for 8, the OD value may be there, for 16, the OD value will be there, for 32, the OD value. So, you can get ultimately a straight line. You can get a straight line. So, this is basically what we are saying. But in practical aspects, when you are plotting such a kind of OD with concentration, you can get either positive deviation or negative deviation. That means you can get the curve in either this direction or in that direction. If the curve moves in downward direction, it is called negative negative deviation. And if the curve moves upward in direction, then it is called positive deviation. Positive deviation. So why negative or positive deviation is happening and that is why the importance of the deviations of the Lambert Beer's law. Deviations of the Beer's law. So the first thing is the high concentration. High concentration. Or you can say just simply say concentration. Concentration. So the deviation of Beer's law starts from this concentration. According to Beer, the more the concentration, the more the OD. Right. Say, uh, in a cubit, two molecules are present quite far apart and light is passing through these uh, two molecules. So, this molecule will absorb the light also and this molecule will absorb the light also and as a result, you can get a OD say 0.2. So, when we are adding more amount of, uh, more number of molecule into the sample, so we are adding more concentration, In we are increasing the concentration of the uh, bovine serum aluminum. In that case, more number of molecules are present nearby. So there is a every probability that two molecules that are normally present in far apart and now can join together by forming some kind of ionic bond or hydrophobic interaction, whatever it is. So the two molecules which are normally separated away and take up the light, now after, upon joining, they form dimer or polymer. So there is every probability that two molecules now in increasing concentration forms dimer or maybe trimer or tetramer or polymer and in this case one of the phase of the molecule will absorb the light the other phase will not. So that is the reason why the absorption spectra of monomer is not the same at the, as that of the dimer. Right. So, in this very uh, line where uh, concentration versus OD is plotted and the graph is moving in upward direction normally in normal circumstances, what Beer says, in this case they are thinking about the monomeric molecule. But in high concentration there is a tendency that the monomer will form dimer and it is not essential that the absorption spectrum of dimer is same that of the monomer leading to a positive deviation or a negative deviation. So, this may happen in case of high concentration. The another thing that may happen in high concentration is 
uh, is light scattering. So light scattering. So the first point was actually dimer or tetramer or trimer etc. And the second point is light scattering. So there is a probability that when a dimer, trimer, tetramer or polymer form, for example, in case of lipid molecule, phospholipid molecule, they tend to form spherical missile, missile like structure, that is a polymeric structure. So when it is a polymeric structure and when the light passes into the polymeric structure, there is a probability that light may scatter. In that case, the detector will receive the detector which is placed here, some uh, that measures the amount of the incident light and the amount of transmitted light and by which they can calculate the total amount of absorbance uh, that has been occurred by the sample molecule. The detector will not receive uh, uh, the actual amount of light that should be present. Right. So this is a mole, this is a sample molecule. The sample molecule are polymerizing itself. So the when the light is passing through the sample, the incident light is I zero and the transmitted light should be I. But there is a probability that if the molecule gets polymerization, then there must be some kind of light scattering phenomena. So if light scatter in that case, detector which is present here, something like that, uh, detector will receive a weak beam, weak intensity. So this may happen if we increase the concentration. In, the, in this case, you may uh, have this kind of negative deviation. So whatever we are expecting the OD, you can get the lesser amount of OD than the expected value. But why we have, must have positive deviation in some cases? It has been observed that the uh, protein in a low concentration may tend to uh, denature. There is a probability that in a low concentration, in a very low concentration, a protein tend to denature. So protein are, uh, proteins are composed of amino acids, both hydrophilic and hydrophobic amino acids. So hydrophobic amino acids are present on the interior of the protein and hydrophilic amino acids are present on the periphery of the protein, on the surface of the protein. Normally, in a solvent, polar solvent like water. So whenever uh, you are taking a protein solution which is in low concentration, there is a tendency that the protein will denature and all the amino acid will get exposed. So the more the exposure of the amino acid, in a, uh, the more will be light that will be taken up by the uh, protein uh, amino acids or the atoms present or the electrons present within the protein sample. Right? And that leads to, this leads to the uh, results in the positive deviation. So the first point that leads to the uh, deviations of the Beer's law is the concentration. Concentration can be broken into two parts, one is high, another one is low. In high concentration, the molecule may dimer or tetramer uh, or uh, in the, if it is polymeric form, then the light scattering may, even, may also happen. And if it is a low concentration, the second part, the low concentration, in that case, protein tends to denature itself and the denatured protein will absorb more than the native one. So this is the first deviations of the Beer's law. Second deviations of the Beer's law is the imperfect imperfect monochromacy. What does it mean? Imperfect monochromacy mean? So basically Beer's law is applicable for the monochromatic light only. Beer's law is ap applicable to the monochromatic light only. That means uh, say we are taking a protein then the incident light should be 280 nanometer. So if it is incident light and if it is 280 nanometer, then we have to use UV source. So you are using a light source. Light is the UV source, which can emit from 180 to 400 nanometer wavelength. And there is your sample, which is the protein that is DSA that will absorb maximally at 280 nanometer. So you need to transfer only the 280 nanometer. That is why you need a, an instrument which is known as the monochromatic. The function of the monochromatic is to convert the polychromatic light to the monochromatic light. That means the light can emit each of these wavelengths from 100 to 400 nanometer, each of these wavelengths, but we are commanding monochromatic to send only 20 nanometer to the BSA molecule, to, the, to our sample molecule. So we can command 280 in a spectrophotometer or in a colorimeter. We can command 280. In this, in that case, the monochromatic will uh, will program itself in such a way that they will transfer only the 20 nanometer to the sample molecule and they will absorb all other radiation except one that is 20 nanometer. So this is the actual function of the monochromatic but there is the point is imperfect monochromacy that means if the system contains some kind of monochromatic which is an error 
that means you are transferring not only to 80 but it was transferring or uh, 270 also to 90 also 300 also you don't know because you are actually putting a value that is 280 into the spectrophotometer instrument and you are expecting that your monochromatic will pass only 280 nanometer but in this case it is not occurring actually this is not happening the monochromatic is transferring more than one wavelength of light polychromatic light in this case the sample will receive not only 280 nanometer but maybe 281 maybe 279 maybe 270 maybe 290 something like that in this case it may lead to the deviations of the actual OD value so the third point is temperature effect. Temperature effect. So there is a uh, there is a tendency of many for 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 many experimental uh, procedure uh, there is a protocol that you, heating is required for the color development. For example, if you estimate DNA uh, DNA concentration uh, by DPA method diphenylamine method. In this case, after addition of diphenyl amine, you need to heat the sample to it so that you can get the color. And the same is true for the measurement of the RNA concentration. RNA by arsenal method, after addition of arsenal region, you need to heat the sample. So whenever you are heating a sample for the color development, heating actually increases the degree of solubility. Heating actually increases the degree of solubility, the association, dissociation properties, the hydration properties, solubilization properties, etc. Uh, for practical application, uh, for example, you are taking a container and you are adding some water into it and now sugar, table sugar, ordinary table sugar, one spoon or two teaspoon table sugar is added. You can see several sugar molecules may be present on the bottom, right? They are not dissolving. That means more than the saturated le level you have added the sugar in the solution. So in that case, if you need to dissolve this sugar molecule which is normally precipitated out of the solution, what you need, you need to heat the sample. A application of heat actually causes the solubilization of the sugar molecule that has been precipitated. So that means heating actually increases the degree of solubility. So whenever you are going for the estimation of DNA by DPA method or RNA for arsenal method, you need to heat the sample to get the color and you need now after development of color, you need to take that sample to the normal temperature so that you can take OD value because you cannot take a boil uh, sample directly to the spectrophotometer it will it will uh, destroy your spectrophotometer in that case you need to cool down the solution so after color development after color development say 100 degrees centigrade say boiling water temperature you need to cool the sample to normal temperature so that now you can take OD so it is definitely because the sample is getting colored at 100 degree centigrade temperature and at high temperature the association dissociation properties the degree of solubilization properties may differ so at a low temperature there may be some sort of decrease in intensity of the color so in that case the od value might be not the normal expected value right so this is another point that is known which is known as the temperature effect number four is the sample instability There are many samples which are not stable. For example, phosphate estimation by phosphate estimation by AMSA method. So in this method, whenever you are uh, detecting the amount of phosphate present in a, uh, in a sample, that is known as the AMSA method, in this case, after getting the color, you have to immediately take OD. Say uh, there are 10 students available and all of them are actually measuring the phosphate concentration and the first students are getting or taking OD in that case the last student the 10 students is waiting for say uh, 30 minutes or say 40 minutes that after uh, one by one I, I, will, I will be there and I will take the OD in this case their OD value may differ significantly because this uh, particular uh, complex that is formed after the addition of the reagent into the sample is very unstable. So after addition of the reagent, after getting the color, what you need, you need to immediately go to the spectrophotometer to, to take the OD. So sample instability is another big problem for spectrophotometry. spectrophotometry. So if whenever you get the color, immediately take the OD. The fifth point is the fluorescence. 
So fluorescence is a phenomenon wherever one molecule after getting radiation emits light of a longer wavelength. So what we are expecting here, so this is say this is again Bohen's law alloy in PSA and you are transferring a light of 280 nanometer is the incident light. So in, in detector will receive only the 280 nanometer light again. Maybe the sample is absorbing 25% light and the, so, so that the uh, light that is transmitted light will be 75% but the wavelength of the light should be 20 nanometer because we are transferring 20 nanometer light not the other one. But in the fluorescence molecule, if it is a fluorescent molecule like uh, fluoroscamine, like rhodamine, these are several, there are, there are several fluorescence molecules available in nature. Uh, if it is a fluorescence molecule, then after receiving that 20 nanometer light, they will emit a light of a longer wavelength. That means greater than 20 nanometer. It may be 300 nanometer, it may be uh, 350 nanometer, but it should be greater than 20 nanometer. So if your sample contains some fluorescence molecule, then the detector will receive two different kind of wavelength. One that is transferring through the sample, say 20 nanometer, we are transferring 20 nanometer, so the detector will receive 20 nanometer, and another one that is the fluorescence light that must be greater than 20 nanometer, maybe 300 nanometer or maybe 320 nanometer. So the detector will be receiving two different type of wavelength, one is 20 nanometer, another one is more than 20 nanometer. In that case, the actual value of OD might differ. And the sixth point is the turbidity. Turbidity. It has been observed that the turbid solution will absorb more than the native solution because if, if, uh, if, we, uh, if we want to inoculate bacterial cell to a media and after getting turbidity we want to measure the what is the actual number of bacterial cells present in the sample via the turbidimetric method. In this case not the bacterial cells are present but also their metabolic waste products are also present. In that case because bacteria is present the metabolic waste, product of, uh, waste products are also available so the total amount of OD actually far greater than the actual amount of OD present. So this constitutes the deviations of the six points of the deviation of the DR's law. One is the high sample or concentration. One is the concentration. Concentration can be broken down into two high, high, in, high and low. In high concentration the molecule may dimer or trimer or tetramer and it is not essential that the absorption spectrum of dimer is same that of the monomer. The second point is light scattering in this if it, if it is a polymeric form like sp spherical Michel or just Michel bilayer of Michel in that case the light may scatter and the scattered light will not be received by the detector and there is another point in low concentration in protein in very low concentration may tend to denature and the denatured protein will absorb more than the native one. Number second, second point is the number two point is the imperfect monochromacy. If the monochromator is not working properly, if the monochromator is sending more than one uh, wavelength of light to the uh, to the sample. In that case, the sample will receive more than two more than one wavelength, and there may be some kind of deviations. Number three, the temperature effect. The temperature effect means that uh, if we increase, uh, if we heat a sample to develop its color, in that case, before uh, getting the normal temperature, you, you will not be able to take the OD. So the OD may differ significantly. Number four is the sample instability that has been described by the uh, phosphate estimation by NSA method. Wherever you are getting the color at any particular time, immediately you have to take the uh, OD value. You cannot wait for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that. Number five is the fluorescence. Fluorescence means there are several molecules that will absorb at a particular radiation emits and emits light of a longer wavelength. In that case, the detector will receive two different kind of wavelength. One is the incident light wavelength of the incident light, another is the fluorescence wavelength. Right. And number six is the turbidity. Hope you have understood the deviations of your slope.